Hello and welcome to my new video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lex. If you own a Nintendo Switch, I'm sure you know it can be difficult to sort through the eShop and find the cheaper games actually worth buying. Today, I wanted to showcase 10 of my favorite games, $10 and under, that are truly a good time. These are all cozy, relaxing games, so I hope you love them. To begin, I found this game called Please Fix the Road that has some fun puzzle elements and beautiful graphics. Your job is to repair roads so that vehicles or animals can make it from point A to point B, and the animals include kittens, so you know I recommend playing. You can manipulate individual road tiles until you've got it right, but each level has a specific and limited set of tools to give you a challenge. I think puzzle games are doing really well in the cozy gaming community lately, and this one is refreshing and casual, something you can pick up for as little or as long as you want for a play sesh. You can grab Please Fix the Road for $9.99 on the eShop. If you've been keeping up with gaming at all, you've probably seen the supermarket simulators that are gaining popularity. I guess the more we hate our jobs in real life, the more we want to work in a virtual grocery store? I don't know, but it's undeniably fun and enjoyable. The best simulator I've found for Switch so far is Sci Market or Sim Market Supermarket Simulator, which you can grab for $7.99. You get to do all the fun things about running a digital supermarket, stocking the shelves, checking out your customers, dealing out the correct change, and keeping your shop tidied and your boxes thrown away. I don't know about you, but I always loved the toy cash registers as a kid, and this just feels like a very upgraded version of that. Another casual game with low stakes, definitely worth picking up. Plantaby, Plant Abbey? I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce this one, but it's adorable. You get to purchase and raise your own plants for clients, and as you sell your plants and make a profit, you'll unlock all kinds of furniture and decor to shape your space. It's peak relaxation, very low stakes, and you get to choose how quickly the time passes as you care for your plants. Some of the unlockable items include pretty new plants and cat plushies, so it's a winner for me. This game will set you back only $6.99, and for the cute pixel graphics and virtual plants, I think that's definitely worth it. I mean, look at how cute you can make your little garden. I also think you can get a lot of playtime out of this, as there are 90 plants to collect and you can infinitely redecorate your garden. I've actually made a full video for this game before, if you want to see early gameplay. Palea is 100% free on every platform, although you can choose to spend money on some of the cute outfits that they offer in the in-game shop. This life sim lets you dabble in the cozy gaming elements that we've come to expect, such as resource gathering, critter catching, farming, decorating, and fishing. There's a storyline to it as well that actually engaged me, and I appreciate the ongoing updates that are adding more and more items and functionality to the game. While the multiplayer feels pretty limited and not fully explored yet, I think it's worth dipping your toes in to see if you enjoy the game. What do you have to lose? It's free. I picked this game up because I thought the name was funny, but Tiny Little Farm is surprisingly cute and rewarding for just $9.99. I think it has some pretty clear inspiration from Stardew Valley. You inherit a farm from your grandparents, and the fishing mechanism is pretty much identical, but I like the art style and the way the days change. If you're not tired of farming sims and I totally get it if you are. I do think this one is worth picking up. The game felt like an intersection between console and mobile games to me, and something about mobile farming games has always won me over. It's got cute art, too. Additionally, where it kind of differs from Stardew Valley in the backstory, you're actually working to try to cover some of your grandparents' medical expenses, so I think that's neat instead of your grandparents just having passed away. Pico Park definitely isn't a new game, but it has sparked my interest several times over the last couple of years, and I finally decided to give it a try since it's only $4.99. The game is a local or online multiplayer puzzle game that you can enjoy with up to seven other friends. I think it's funny and frustrating, and you definitely have to communicate with each other to get past the obstacles and grab the key you need to complete each level. There are 48 total levels, so that's a lot of playtime for just five bucks. Also, the characters are just little guys. I think that Fortnite has gotten a bad rap for being a game for annoying kids who bully you or just for being cringe, but did you know that this year they added a mode called Fortnite Festival that's basically just free Guitar Hero or Rock Band? So far they've featured a broad range of songs by Ariana Grande, Metallica, Billie Eilish, The Weeknd, The Cranberries, Evanescence, and plenty more for you to enjoy and vibe with. Again, Fortnite is free and there are so many modes available to play now, I think it's worth picking up. In my experience, I will say that the Battle Royale on Switch is not worth it because of the Switch's hardware limitations, but modes like Festival work perfect and can be played with your friends. They even added a battle stage where you compete against 15 other players to snag the highest score on a song. Guitar Hero's playstyle is super nostalgic for me, and I actually do enjoy playing on a gaming controller. 
This next game is so stinking cute. You can grab a tiny sticker tail for $9.99, but if you're patient, it does often go on sale for seven. As you can see, the art style is adorable. In this game, you can turn items from your surroundings into little stickers, which you can then re-stick in different places. You're solving puzzles with your stickers, but you can also decorate the island however you want. I think this game has good replayability, which makes it worth the price tag for me. Personally, I like to play this game to wind down in the evenings. Predictably, I'm back to praise hidden cat games as well. Beyond just being adorable and featuring cat meows, these games are also super cheap. You can grab this one for just $3.99, and it's called Cats Hidden in Cozy Places, so you know I'm not lying about it being a cozy game. I think I do prefer these games on PC overall just because it's easier to click with a mouse than with a Joy-Con, but hidden cat games are a growing genre of late that I just can't stop playing. I've also recommended others in the past. This next game is, as it says, a short one to technically complete, but A Short Hike is another game that I think has really good replayability. I found there are a lot of new things to discover each time I make my way up the mountain. You can pick your own path and discover treasures as you travel to help you make your way to the top. You can also interact with other hikers for some little side quest vibes, which I think is cute. This is also a very play at your own pace kind of game, so if you just want to stop and swim for a while, that's totally fine. You can grab A Short Hike for just $7.99. Technically, that was 10 games and that's all I promised, but I wanted to throw in a little bonus game here at the end because it's actually one of my favorite games that I've tried this year, and that's Sticky Business. Kind of going back to the supermarket vibes of wanting a digital job, this one lets you run your own sticker business. You get to build storylines with some of your clients, which is neat, and you can design all of your own stickers however you like and sell them. You can include little candy freebies to get more love for your shop, and you really have to learn what your clients are looking for in order to complete all of their stories. I enjoyed this a ton and got many hours of playtime, making the $9.99 price tag more than worth it for me. I also think it does differ from games like the supermarket one in that you do get to be creative here. I think the creative element really changes up the gameplay for me. Getting to design your own stickers was really cool. I hope that you enjoyed seeing these cheap but fun cozy games. Please let me know if you pick any of them up or already have opinions about some of them. I'd love to hear. Uh, in the meantime, check out my most recent Animal Crossing Island tour and I'll see you next time. Bye!